Ooh, there's a cat hair in my coffee. Wow. Oh, hey you. What up? Welcome to my channel or welcome back. I'm Mariam. Today we are testing new makeup. We have lots of brand new things. I mean, it is just a lot going on in front of me right now. So this is a video that I like to conduct once or twice a month, sometimes more than twice a month because I do receive a lot of products in the mail. In turn, I like to test them out on myself so that you don't buy them before I try them. This way I deliver an honest Team True style review for you guys, a first impression. Then also I elaborate on these products later in my Faves X Fails video. So this is what we're doing today and I'm here for it. I'm very excited. This is my third cup of coffee. So bear that in mind. So remember to subscribe if you aren't already. Hit that notification bell because that is what notifies you of my Wednesdays and Sundays videos. And if you don't get notified, then womp womp. Unfortunately, you missed my video. Videos. We don't want that. We want to all be united. Yes? Yes. All right, let's get into this. Testing, new makeup, here we come. Shh. All right, so as always with these videos, I like to go down the line. I apply my skincare or primer first, then my foundation, my cream products, my powders, my brows, my color cosmetics, eyeshadows, lipsticks, etc. The first product that I am going to show you guys today is actually not a product that I'm trying out for the first time. I have been testing it for the past two weeks and I actually really love it. It is Josie Marin Argan Daily Moisturizer SPF 47, but the tinted version. If you recall, I actually used the non-tinted version a couple of weeks ago and this was in my Faves X Fails video. This is my absolute fave and a lot of you guys said, hey, try out the tinted version. It is is like a game changer, it is the bomb.com, so I have, and as you may know if you've been watching my videos for a couple of months now, I have an ongoing partnership with Josie Marin, so today I am so excited to be talking about their tinted Argan Oil Moisturizer SPF 47. So now this product is $36, and for two fluid ounces, or 60 milliliters, I feel like that's a really fair price. Because if you look at their competitors, they are like in the $50 range for that high of an SPF. So I've also mentioned to you guys that I really love this particular SPF and just SPFs in general as a primer because it does give your skin that nice base, that almost unbreakable sort of barrier. So it's really great for those of you with oily AF skin like myself. So let's apply this guy on. I'm gonna be generous with it because the rule is to apply two fingers to your entire face. And that seems like a lot, but really it's not a lot. It's what you need to actually protect your skin from the harmful UVA and UVB rays. I find that the tinted SPF is even easier to use because you actually see where it's applying on. So it's easier not to miss a spot. Also, this product does not include any bad stuff. It's vegan, it's cruelty-free, mineral oil-free, free of the nasties. So now that I'm well-primed and well-protected, I am ready for the next step because this moisturizer SPF is super lightweight. It's non-greasy, so it's perfect as that first step underneath your foundation and the rest of your makeup. I mean, honestly, this looks so good. If I didn't have this monster right here, I would probably feel okay in my skin as is. I don't actually have a new foundation per se, but NARS is relaunching or reintroducing, let's put it that way, their Soft Matte Complete Foundation. So this came out in 2020, but because we were all locked down in 2020 and because we couldn't really celebrate, we kind of forgot about this product, but it is a really decent full coverage foundation. I haven't really had the need for it this summer because like I said, it's very full coverage, but now that the weather is changing, now that I'm breaking out a little bit more, I think it's time for me to get a little bit more glam. All right, so the shade that I am applying is Barcelona Medium 4, and that is just like my normal shade. I also wear Stromboli from time to time, which is a little bit more yellow, a little bit more olive, but man, look at that full coverage, crazy good. Probably did not need to squirt that much onto my face. I mean, this isn't TikTok. You've seen those TikToks where people are literally dousing their faces in like what seems like a full bottle of foundation. I've seen them too and it scares me, I gotta say. It's very unrealistic, especially because a lot of those people have perfect skin that needs no foundation and no coverage at all. It gets the views, it gets people watching. It's a thing to do, but honestly, it's not for real life, sweetie. And that's kind of how I feel right now. I mean, I didn't apply nearly as much foundation as that TikTok style, but it's still a lot for me. And I'm feeling like I just went a little bit overboard. And this shade, I 
guess doesn't quite match my body just yet. That's okay. Anyway, so this foundation I am well familiar with. I have worn it a lot. I may even have a foundation review on this one. I don't quite recall. I think this is one of those foundations that although is very good and looks very beautiful, it tends to break up on me by the end of the day. So it's not something that I can necessarily wear to an event. But in my case, it would be better for something quick. Like let's say I'm breaking out, let's say I need better coverage and I have some errands to run, some things to do. Basically for me, this would be a really good daytime foundation for my skin when it's at its most problematic. But not for like a reliable all day wear. Damn, that looks like a mask. That really looks like a mask. Not to say I don't like it though. Every time my foundation looks a little too mask-like, I think of my brother and that Huda Beauty video in which he literally tore down my skin and the way that it looked. He said that it looked like wax. He said that I looked like I had a hundred layers of stuff on my face, like a plastic statue. He called me all sorts of names. And ever since then, I kind of started staying away from full coverage foundations because I definitely don't want to look like a wax statue. So yeah, I feel like it might be like a good on-camera thing, but in person, it's just a a little too much. Okay, so for my concealer, I'm gonna reach for NARS again since it came in the same PR package. I'm gonna go for the shade Ginger in their Soft Matte Complete Concealer. Now this concealer, I really, really like a lot. It is super good, super easy to use. Shade Ginger has always been one of my faves. It has a pinch of a peachy undertone, so it's great for those under eye circles. Boom, boom. All right, speaking of Huda Beauty, I'm gonna reach for Pound Cake Powder. I'm gonna set my under eye and my pore zones with this Pound Cake. This isn't new, but it's just something that I have handy right now. And I also find that it works with really full coverage foundations. So I'm just gonna use it to set the T-zone. I have a really weird, a very peculiar product from Iconic London, and it is a Precision Duo Contour Pot in a powder format. I'm gonna go for the shade Medium Shadow. Basically, it looks like this, like an eyeshadow, and it has two shades. So one on the bottom and one on the top. I'm gonna show you close-ups. The bottom looks a little bit cushiony, whereas the top, I mean, literally looks like an eyeshadow. So I'm a little bit perplexed Perplexed. I'm not certain about my ability to apply this well, but I'm gonna go for it. Are there any instructions on the back? Ah yes, apply the cream to the hollows of your face and blend. Apply your foundation and dabbing motions with our seamless blender. Okay, I messed up that step already because I already have my foundation on. All right, so I guess I'm gonna go for this cream. Here goes. Are we seeing this product? Are we seeing it? Okay, maybe it's a little too pale that we don't see it at all. It kind of just looks like it's dirtying up my forehead. All right, let me try a different shade. That seemed to be a little weird. I'm gonna go for tan shadow now. And there's only four shades, so there's only one more shade that is deeper than this one. Okay, this is the tan shadow, much, much richer. Let's go for it. Okay, that is a lot of pigment. Is it me or is there a discrepancy between these two shades? Like there needs to be something in between the medium and the tan because the tan strikes me as pretty deep toned, whereas the medium was barely noticeable on my skin tone. Shade range. But anyway, I'm gonna just add whatever is on my brush. I'm not gonna pick up any more. I'm gonna use the other side of the brush to blend that out. All right, it does blend rather well. I don't know, I'm not sold. This seems gimmicky AF to me. And I don't know, is it actually worth the result? Hmm, I don't know. Iconic London has always struck me as like one of those Insta-famous type of brands, you know? Like I actually am not sure if their products are good or if they just have good Instagram marketing. I mean, that wasn't impressive to me. I didn't care for it. it just seemed like whatever. I'm gonna go over those parts with my foundation brush just to kind of blend them in a little bit further and then see if maybe I can use the powder on top. Also, the packaging is really stupid. It's not really opening up. Ouch! I guess the powder is okay if you add it on top and it definitely has like a cooler undertone. So it feels more like a contour powder rather than a bronzing powder. So for those of you who like to contour, this could be a nice option to try. I'm personally not sold. It's just all right. Moving on, we've got some new bronzers from Physicians 
Kitchen's formula. This looks like a holiday collection. Smells like gingerbread, smells like cookies. Ah yes, yeah, so we have butter coffee, we have butter cake, butter donut, and butter cookie. I'm gonna go for the butter cake one. Damn, this literally smells like dessert. I wish they would have sent dessert as well with this PR package. Where's my dessert? All right, so this looks like a swirly type of bronzer with some shimmers. I'm gonna use my Laura Mercier big brush. Oh wow, this is dusty. Holy shoot. Let's see if I can add a little bit of warmth to this complexion. All right, not bad. That actually did do something. I still feel like I have a grayed out complexion. I don't know if it was the contour or the foundation shade is a little off, but anyway, let's try to warm it up with this bronzer. Okay, I, I like the bronzer. I can't say that I love it, but it definitely did add a nice luminosity to my complexion. Took it from a flat, masky matte to something a little bit more alive, I think, and that I appreciate. But I don't know, so far, I'm not super sold on anything, really. Hmm, okay, let's do brows. The brows category always makes me just a little weary, as you may already know. And today I definitely wanna try out the new Rare Beauty Shape and Fill Duo that you might have seen in one of my videos before, but that's because I forgot to do my brows and I needed to grab something quickly and this was just on my table. But today I actually just wanna test it out, try it out the way that I'm supposed to, and give it like a fair chance. All right, so this little compact includes two shades of a brow powder, and then on the other side we have a brush. So here I have the shade light brown, that's what that looks like, and I also have the shade brown. Light brown versus brown. As you can see, I already dipped into the brown, so I'm gonna go for the brown again. I'm gonna dip into the lighter powder and just brush this product through my brows. Through the top of the brow, filling in any sparse areas, through the width of the brow. This is looking a little too orange for me, so I'm just gonna match it on the other side and then I'm gonna switch to the other cooler shade. Switching to the cooler shade. This is a unique looking powder because as I'm dabbing into it, it almost has a spongy effect to it, but it doesn't look very, very pigmented. It applies like an eyeshadow, though it definitely doesn't feel like one. Okay, I'm gonna extend the tail. For this part, I do wish the brush was a little bit more precise than what it is, just so I can perfect that tail, but it's okay. This is called Shape and Fill, and it's definitely good enough for shaping and for filling the brow. Not for like perfecting and for detailing the brow. That would require a different product, but for the purpose of just shaping and filling, this is decent because it does shape and fill very quickly. Also, I feel like this is not the best because you kind of have to be precise when you place the brush in there, otherwise the bristles get messed up. You definitely don't want that because this is already not a very precise brush. So I'm not sure how I feel about the packaging. I guess I don't love it. <laughs> Let's actually move on to the eyeshadow. So today I have two new eyeshadow palettes in front of me. One of them is the Too Faced Cinnamon Swirl Limited Edition Palette. Gorgeous on the inside, very fall appropriate, very much Thanksgiving vibes, not ready for it. The second palette on my table is the new Naked Cyber Edition. So this is very much Y2K inspired. Ooh. Inside, it is looking very peachy to me. Like the first thing that stands out is this section right here, which looks very warm and very pastel-y. I see there's lots of peachy tones, matte peachy tones, as well as shimmery peachy tones. And then there's this other section that has some purple. So I'm not sure if this color story is speaking to me, but I definitely wanna try it out. Though, I think I'm gonna save this for its own video. Let me know your thoughts on that, comment below. And if you want it, you got it, and this will be my next video. I think for today, I'm gonna stick to the cinnamon swirl, pumpkin spice latte vibes, P. Louise base, which a lot of you guys just called a glorified concealer. I kind of agree, but I'm still using it. I'm gonna spread that across. This is a flat eyeshadow brush from the Bomb Cosmetics, by the way, but it feels like a concealer brush, which is why I'm using it for the base. And now for the first shade, I'm thinking, let's go for a matte brown. Dip it into See Me Rollin'. They see me rollin', and they hatin'. I'm gonna add that to my entire movable lid section from the lash line past the crease. I really wanna go for a chocolatey type of look today. Ooh, I gotta say, this eyeshadow is delivering. It is really sticking to that base very well. Mm, it's looking right. Oh yeah. 
Hello. So this shade, they see me rolling. It's a really, really, really nice shade. Ooh, I enjoyed that. I'm gonna take a fluffy brush like this and blend those edges. So we kind of have the shape, right? Looking like it's shaped. But what I wanna do now is just blur the edges of that shape so it just looks a little bit more profesh and less amateurish. So I'm just using a clean brush. It's like a pointy, fluffy brush. Still keeping the shape, but just blurring it out slightly. Like that. I think I blurred out this one a little too much that it no longer holds on to the shape. So I'm gonna have to do the same thing to this eye. Sometimes I get carried away in these videos. Next, let's go for a lighter shade. How about this one, Muffin Top? Oh my God, that name. Just gonna work that into that blurred out area and also into the brow bone like that. Yes. Same brush, no need for anything new. That's a much lighter shade, so it will definitely help blur out that edge even further. And though that's not what I was going for originally, it's what I'm going for now. Beautiful. Actually, there's lots of beautiful shimmery shades in here. This one looks great. This one looks beautiful. This one, this one, look at that. Ooh, all of those, all of those are delivering something special. I like. Okay, I'm gonna go for this darker brown called Batter Up. I'm gonna add that to the outer corners, almost in a wing to lift it, but then also to just add a bit more depth to this hooded area of my eye. You see that? And then of course I will blur that, but I'm just adding it kind of precisely first, like that, so that it looks lifted. I'll even bring it in a little bit and then just continue blurring that out. Ooh, I love that. It looks like chocolate. Same thing here. I love a good chocolate smoky eye. Always a fan, but especially during vampy season, which by the way is also Libra season. Hello. So all you well-balanced kings and queens out there, comment below if you're part of our team, if you're part of our squad that loves aesthetics and everything that is aesthetically pleasing. I don't know what's going on here, but the Too Faced changed their formula. Why is everything performing so well? I mean, granted, I haven't reached for any shimmery shadows, but so far these mattes are stunning. Let's reach for this shade here called Frost Those Buns. This is like a pink champagne shade. Beautiful. Needed it. So right here for a pop. Yes. Very creamy. I'm pleasantly surprised. And I'll be honest, I haven't been excited with Too Faced shadows in a long time. There's no fallout either. I mean, what is going on here? Ooh, this is a keeper. I don't even like cinnamon. I'm seeing like a little mistake that I made. So I'm gonna correct it by actually like looking at my monitor. Okay, I'm gonna leave the eyes alone for a second. I want to go for the lips. We have a new collection from Too Faced called Lady Bold, and it's inspired by the Lady Bold red lipstick. This one right here, that looks absolutely stunning. But I actually don't wanna go for a red today. There's lots of shades in here, I think maybe like 10 or 12. And I picked out two that I thought were very appropriate for this look. One of them is Be True to You. Beautiful, orangey brown type of color. Trying to figure out the scent of this lipstick. It's sweet, but it's also a little citrusy. I can't seem to put my finger on it, or I guess maybe my nose. All right, and the second shade is Take Over. And now this is just a beautiful brown shade that I am going to use. This is the one for me today. First, I'm gonna line my lips. I'm gonna use this chocolate chip lip liner from Dose of Colors X Nima Tang. I've been waiting all summer to use this one. And now this one is so deep that it is almost black, but it actually is a very, very dark brown. I'm ready for it. Yes, I still do the lines. Why? Because although you cover it up with lipstick, the lipstick still adheres differently to the lip liner, thus making it seem like you have some pockets or some folds in your lips, and that's what gives the lips the illusion of fullness without looking fakey. So I'm a big believer in the lines, even though this right now looks extremely creepy Halloween edition. Take over time. Oh my God, this is so beautiful. Stunning. Are you kidding me? I'm really impressed, Too Faced. I'm really impressed. Just cleaning up that lip line, making sure there's no bleeding. So this is a very shiny lipstick. It has some sheen that I'm gonna blot off just to keep it a little bit vampy. And oh my God, I am truly, truly, truly obsessed. So now I'm thinking I need just a little bit of warmth on my face because now it's looking just a little too cool. So I'm gonna add this Laura Mercier blush in the shade Passion Fruit. Definitely a summery shade name but I think I needed a little bit of that so that it's not too vampy, so it's a little bit more warm and cozy still, you know? I'm gonna curl my lashes. I'm gonna go for this Hello Lashes Mascara by It Cosmetics. I don't love the wand, but 
I want to actually test out the product. It's okay. Lower lashes real quick. And onto the final product that I'm testing out in today's video. We have a new highlighter from LYS Beauty. So now this is the first clean black owned brand in Sephora. Actually started by my friend Tisha Thompson. And I am very, very, very excited for this launch. There's actually a couple more products in this collection. There's liquid highlighters, three of them. But today I just wanna test out the powder highlighter because that is just what I'm naturally more drawn towards. So we have the Signature Triangle Compact and oh my God, this highlighter looks absolutely stunning. It looks like liquid gold, but in a pressed powder form. The shade name is Fearless, so it's a warm bronze. And then we also have a rose gold Aim High highlighter. This one is called Genuine, beautiful. And last but not least is a champagne shade called Brave. Uh, Yeah, this needs to go on my face right now. Grab a little bit of that. Ooh, are we ready? One swipe is really all that you need. This is absolutely glorious. Very creamy, but with enough sparkle to add some interest. Looks really great on the skin and just adds that nice glaze. She's here, she is ready. And this is the final look. Vampy vibes, fall season vibes, Libra season, here we come. But on a cusp with Scorpio, just saying, I am loving this look. I feel like it's very me. Very season appropriate. Stepping into the festive season. I don't know, I'm just feeling all the fuzzies. I'm feeling all the fuzzies in this video based off of this look alone. All right, so let's go over all of these products that I have tried out. It started off just a little bit rocky with the too much foundation application and weird bronzers and very strange contour powders. These I did not really understand. I probably won't be using them again because they just didn't make me feel very good. Also, the shade range was kind of iffy, kind of weird. It was definitely missing a chunk in the middle range. So I don't know, that one by Iconic London was not my fave from the bunch. However, once we stepped into the Too Faced Cinnamon Swirl Palette, I feel like things took a turn, you know? So I will definitely say that the star player of today's video was this palette. I was surprised at the quality of these Too Faced eyeshadows. I'm honestly not used to seeing such great quality, such easy blendability. I guess what I'm trying to say is I'm not used to having such a positive experience with a Too Faced palette. Or let's just say I haven't had a positive experience in a while. So the fact that this was so great is actually making me question everything. Moving on to the Lady Bold lipsticks. This one was a hit. This was a gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous formulation. Beautiful color range. The fact that there are so many different shades that are perfect for the holiday season, for the fall, is definitely intriguing me. And I definitely think I'm going to be reaching more for these lipsticks. I really like the finish. Meh, this like cosmetics mascara is okay at best, but you know, it did the thing, so I'm not too mad at it. But I gotta say, these LYS highlighters, at first impression, are really, really stunning. I love the shade that I just used, Brave, which is a champagne shade. I feel like it just brought the whole look together, made me feel even more festive, even more put together, even more appropriate for the season. So overall, I gotta say, I had a really great experience in today's video, putting all these new products to the test for you so that you don't have to. And with that said, you guys, I think I'm gonna leave this video on this very positive note, aiming high. Let me know what you wanna see next. We have Halloween right around the corner. Sound off, I'll let your voice be heard, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Check out more videos over here, and I'll see you later. Mwah.